As a kid, growing up in Venice, Florida, where the sun shined most of the time and most of that time was essentially mine, I rambled and dabbled in all of the things I would eventually pursue in my life. My best buddy, and conveniently located across the cul-de-sac neighbor, Andy, was often my partner in crime. We'd ride our bikes through the quiet subdivision to play on the dirt mound at the far end of the lake, or set up theaters on Jack Randa's vacant lots, using discarded supplies from nearby construction sites. But if we weren't building blanket forts or swimming in our family pools, I was in my closed-door room, running a radio station to nowhere. I'd play cassettes or records back to back and sometimes aimlessly but passionately strum an acoustic guitar making up songs on the fly. I'd do my best Casey Kasem during the talk breaks for the ghostly listening public and imagine what they wanted to hear next. All alone in reality but surrounded in dream by a romantic vision of other people tuning in. My black hole radio was driven by a sense that as a human being, my place was to reach out and share. The first glimpse inside of a real radio station for me would be years later, when at 13, my older brother and I started a Christian rock band. The Joy FM had us on a number of times for their local music show. It wouldn't take long, though, to fall back into the black hole. After I graduated from Miami's New World School of the Arts with my bachelor's in theater, I was looking for any kind of diversion from giving into real life, so I took a summer job at a camp in upstate New York. My friend Chris was going to teach theater. My girlfriend Jen, who ironically went on to have a career in radio, was going to teach photography. But with most of the other positions filled, my options were limited. Until I saw that the camp's old radio station hadn't been spearheaded in years. It was a tiny room in the middle of the woods with a desk and a pile of dusty equipment. There were hundreds of ink tubes in the desk drawer. Who knows why? Maybe the camp newspaper shared the space too at some point. So I set out to do the best I could with what I had and went to work on the vibe. Emptying one tube at a time, I painted the whole room black and created a French Woods radio sign. Then I cleared the cobwebs, set up the desk, and got the equipment to work. At first, only a few kids signed up, but once the word got out, they were lining up outside with their song lists, eager to get their turn behind the mic. There was only one minor detail missing. The transmission equipment was broken, and even with our pleas to the camp's directors, they had no intention of fixing it. Now here I am again, this time with the World Wide Web on my side. But even if this ends up lost in a void, I share Ani DeFranco's philosophy. When a journalist asked how she felt about her newfound fame, she said something like, I was playing before you came, and I'll still be playing after you've gone. I'm the same dreamer, alone in her room on a black hole radio. Except now, the material is real and the romantic visions of reality, because people can tune in. So if you have, <clears throat> hi, I'm T, your host of Television Dinner Theater Radio, my variety talk show based out of New York City, featuring artists, professionals, unprofessionals, enthusiasts, and everyday Janes and Joes from all walks of life. Each time we meet, we'll listen to theatrical excerpts, original music, and new versions of old favorites. And before we say goodbye, I'll play what I like to call a relic recording. These tracks are raw clips of surviving memories or salvage traces of a captured moment in time. So finally, without further ado, I bring you the first episode of our premiere season. If you'd like to join me for dinner, I ordered in Japanese food. As for our first guest, well, I guess the guest will be me. Close your eyes 
I started things off with some rough mixes of my songs Day Is Done and Blindfolded. Thanks to Staten Island's own Matt Tatone, we had the privilege of recording them at Anthony Esposito's schoolhouse studio when it was somewhere between Hell and Chelsea. From those same sessions, here's Let It Go, Compile. Stop the blows Grown deep in my gut Clenched up for cuts and 